GitHub Actions. You've probably heard of CI, CD, that's continuous integration and continuous delivery. You've probably heard of platforms like Travis CI, Circle CI. GitHub Actions is very similar, but it's on steroids. And what do I mean by that? In this video, we're going to cover what is continuous integration and continuous delivery. What can it do for you and specifically focusing on GitHub Actions? And what can GitHub Actions do from sorting data to running automated tests to sending notifications? There's a huge marketplace with almost 5,000 plugins you can use easily with a couple of lines of YAML config. How to write your own custom plugin from Hello World to sorting JSON file and rewriting your README file in HTML. You will also hear what the community are up to with GitHub Actions. And don't forget, there is a GitHub Actions hackathon at the moment by DevTO with prizes of up to $1,500. Don't go anywhere, we're going to get stuck in right now. And if you know about CI and CD and GitHub Actions, there is always more to learn. If you want to get into tech or you're already in tech and you want to upskill and get better, my channel is about getting you involved into open source and upskilling. Open source is an amazing way to get not only get better at your skills, to learn new skills, but you can also network and meet amazing people around the world. This will help you get the job, the clients and money that you want and that you deserve. Don't forget to join our Discord if you want to chat between live streams and videos. If that sounds interesting to you, subscribe to my channel for some more videos on GitHub, open source, and web technologies. And hit that bell to get notified each time I post a video and go live. I have awesome guests on my channel and so more coming up as well. So let's start at the beginning. What is continuous integration and continuous delivery, also known as CI and CD? CI is designed to integrate your code with the team and the rest of the project to run all the automated tests, automated linters, any checks that you have on a vanilla platform that isn't your local dev environment. Usually each time you push, this triggers the events. And then if there are any failures, you get notified. You can fix these issues before the rest of the team reviews your pull request to get merged in. The idea is little and often. And the faster that CI returns feedback to the team and the team members, the more beneficial it is because then they can fix any issues in any pull request really quickly. And that's why doing little and often changes is really useful. Therefore, if anything does go wrong, you know exactly what has recently been changed. Deploying your code to the relevant environment is the continuous delivery and continuous deployment. The idea is if CI gives you that thumbs up and successfully passes all the checks, then it will deploy it to the relevant environment. If it's still in the pull request, it could deploy it to a feature environment. If it's been merged into the develop branch or the main branch and it can be deployed to testing or staging or production depending on which branch has been merged into. That way the users and the community get benefit immediately from the change. That's why it's important not to try and think about doing huge features, a huge perfectly designed card layout with all this great stuff but has Lauren Ipsen text in it because that doesn't add any values to the user. Whereas if you just had a simple list with a bit of basic information as already immediately giving value back to the project and to the users. So think about starting with a lower fidelity piece of work that has value and then you can iterate and improve on it frequently to make it more aesthetically pleasing. Most projects have CI and CD at some sort of level. So it's important for you to not only understand it, but to use it in your projects as well. And you may think, oh, my project is too small to use it. No project is too small to use CI. GitHub Actions make it so simple and straightforward to integrate to your project that with a few clicks and a few lines of YAML, you can have GitHub Actions running for your project and reap the benefits immediately. And your community who are contributing to your project or your team members who are contributing to your project can actually have the benefits of CI straight away. And if you are familiar with this, there's always so much more to learn. Each time I look at new projects and see what plugins they're using in the GitHub Actions, it's so interesting. From, like I said, notifications to linters to testers, but to load testing, performance testing. There is so much you can do on CI. You don't have to get it perfect. GitHub Action configuration is part of your code base. So each time you want to add a new feature to your GitHub Actions that runs each time there is an event, you can iterate on this and improve on your CI pipeline. So I definitely recommend having it from day one, but keeping it simple. Each time you add new features to your project, you might add complementing features to CI. A GitHub Action workflow can be triggered from a push to a specific 
specific branch, to a push to any branch, to raising a pull request, uh, to creating an issue, commenting on an issue, closing an issue, creating a release. And then you can perform any number of actions that you wish. There are so many things possible and I'm really interested to know what your ideas are. People have built games of GitHub Actions. So in their README, in their custom profile, they have Chess, Connect4, there's a whole raft of things. And you're gonna hear more from the community shortly. But I'm really interested to know what you would use it for or what crazy ideas you would use it for. Leave a comment below. You may be thinking, why run these on CI? I could run these commands locally, run the lint to run the automate tests. But your environment is a clean environment. On CI, it builds that new environment each time. So it's completely clean. And it's therefore, you don't run into issues where it, oh, it works on my computer and it doesn't work on yours. It will be a vanilla environment that is completely configured from the YAML config. This really ensures consistency within your project. And with code spaces coming out, this is going to be a massive game changer where people can run your project in the browser on a GitHub code space. But that's a video for another time. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in hearing about. No need to install Python or Node or Ruby. Just hit branch, hit fork and start working on that open source project and start contributing immediately. You can run a GitHub workflow for different events. One for a pull request, one for a GitHub issue being raised, one for when there's a failure. There's so many things that you can do. You can configure all these different workflows and actions. So you've probably seen in the pull request, there are green ticks, red ticks. This is what a failed one looks like. And you've probably seen ones that are green where it's uh, happy to be merged or happy to have a review because CI has passed. You have a new tab at the top of your repository where you have actions. And this is where your builds actually run with the various different workflows. And you can see the green and red ticks, the ones that have passed, the ones that have failed. And if you click on them, you can see the steps within the workflow file. And if there's a failure, you can see exactly what step has failed. And then if you expand that step, you can see in more details exactly what the error is. And here's a look at the marketplace, almost 5,000 possible options. There are so many different ones. Do have a look at this. They're split into different categories from monitoring to project management, publishing, recently added, testing, utilities, chat, code quality, code review. There are so many different awesome categories. Do have a look at this and let me know what awesome ones you find and you think will be useful. Let's take an example. I really like this one. Closed stale issues. Issues that have been open for a really long time. Why keep them open? If they're important, they'll get recreated again or reopened. It closes issues that haven't had activities for a while. And to use it, it's a very simple. It's a few lines of YAML config and you can see there is a schedule. So it doesn't run on a push event or a create event. It actually runs on a scheduler. And if you know the Linux Cron or you see it, it will look very familiar to you. And that gives you your GitHub action and it will run on the scheduler and close any stale issues. And you can even go even further and configure it to say anything that's older than 30 days, 60 days to your requirements. And you can also get it to give a notification five days before. So therefore, if you want to add activity or you want to keep that issue open, then that way it won't close it in five days later. How awesome is that? Keep your backlog clean. Those are actions that already exist in the marketplace and you can configure them to, to suit you. What happens if you want to cut, make your own custom action to do a specific thing for your project or something more general that you can use across all your projects? Again, that is not much harder and I'm going to show you how. Here is a hello world action. Let's create a custom JavaScript action that runs on every push. What we need to do is create a new repo with a file called action.yaml. Give it a name and description. You can add any inputs and outputs. Inputs are configured when the other project is using this GitHub action. And I'm going to show you that in the next custom JavaScript action because that's got more, more details and it's going to generate a HTML table from a JSON file. So we'll come to that. So we'll keep it really simple. And then you can have outputs as well. You choose your environment that you want it to run in. In this case, node version 12. And you also choose the file that it's going to run. And we'll just put a console log in this file, but it will run it on the GitHub action and you'll see the output. And to use it in your project, you will just include the repo URL. That's the user, the owner or the organization and the repo name and the branch or version number. Ideally, the version number when you create releases, but at the beginning, you could use a branch. And that's how straightforward it is to create a custom action with JavaScript and use it in another project. Now, let's get to a real example, and I'll show you one I've built recently, which helps one of our open source projects. This is the custom action. Let me show you the YAML file. And it might look a little bit scary, but it's just a lot of inputs. This is going to take a JSON file and create a HTML table and add it to the readme. We have inputs like the GitHub token, so we 
you can update the README. Also, how many columns? There is a default, but also the repo that is using this custom GitHub action can specify different columns. So imagine if you want to change the columns from two to three to four, if you had written this in HTML in the README, you'd have to go and update this manually. But all we need to do here is just change the config in the repo that is using this action, and then it will rebuild and recreate the table for us. And I'm gonna show you that. It's really straightforward and it's just awesome and really powerful. Here is our JavaScript file. Again, it looks a little bit scary. We are creating a HTML table with columns that are configurable from a JSON file. We've made it really customizable so people can pass in any JSON object and generate the table that they want with the configurable cells that they want as well. And this is in the GitHub Action Marketplace. The important parts to look at are we're reading the data from our GitHub Action in the code with core.get input with the name of the configurable variable that we expect from the repo that's using this GitHub action. And any defaults will come in from our YAML config. Then we do our JSON to HTML conversion and we write it back to the readme. And that's basically it. So how does it look to actually use this GitHub action? So if you wanted to use this GitHub action on your project, this is how you would use it. You'd say on push, if that's the event you want to listen to. You give the step a name and then you say uses and you give it the repo URL and the version or branch that you want to use. And then using the parameter with, you can pass in all the variables that you want. Some are required, some are optional. And you can read that in the documentation of the GitHub action that you're actually using. And that's it. So if I wanted to use a custom GitHub action in another project, I wouldn't need to do all the other stuff that I showed you. I would just need to do this. And now I can have another project that's going from JSON to HTML. How awesome is that? Let's hear what the community are building and what ideas they have. Hi everyone, Mish from GitHub here. We love GitHub Actions at GitHub. We use it all the time. I think probably one of the best examples is our GitHub Actions hackathon. We actually use GitHub Actions to run our Actions hackathon. So whenever somebody submitted a submission for the hackathon, our action bot would go through, make sure that it was submitted by the right person, it was within the due date, it had a readme file, that actually had an action file, and all this stuff was automated and it gave us way more power to do more things for you, the developers. And that's what I really think GitHub Actions is amazing for, and that's why I love it. It gives you automation in where you need it and gives you the power to do everything else you want. I think using GitHub Actions to create turn-based games like Connect4 with the community would be a great idea. There are so many repositories which use Jupyter Notebook for coding examples, but they are the static pages. So why don't we do something to update them with custom examples and they can be deployed using GitHub Actions. So you can try out different things on GitHub itself. GitHub has come up with this awesome thing called GitHub Actions, which is actually directly competing with Travis CA, Jenkins CA, and all the other CAs that is possible out, out there. So the good thing about this is, why don't we create an ideas hub and whenever someone posts an idea and it gets merged to the master or even the branch gets built, you can get that idea by email and you can even create a mailing list so that everyone is going to get a mail with the new idea. I think it'd be great if we had a GitHub action that on a wiki commit, searched through and made sure that all, all, all images had alt text associated with them, making all of our documentation that much more inclusive. I want a GitHub action that when my issues are marked as fixed, it buys me donuts. I'm Anya and I have used continuous integration during my software engineering studies. We wrote some tests and then we built a pipeline which always checked if all the tests were still green when we uploaded new code to our repository. My idea for a GitHub action is to check for spelling mistakes and typos within code and then add a little annotation so uh, when people make a PR they can just kind of quickly fix them. There are some ideas from the community. Hopefully you've enjoyed that video. Give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already and let me know what ideas you have for GitHub actions in the comments below and let me know what other videos you would like to see. Don't forget, contribute to open source.